Hi guys, my name's Stuart, welcome back to Astro Shed. Today's video I want to talk about this new mount I've got here, it's the Ioptron SEM70 mount. Uh, as you know I had an EQ8 before which I've still got, but I wanted to get something a little bit more manageable. I have got this with a tripod, so I can use it out off the pier if I want to. It came with the 8 inch um, pier extension. Uh, and a tripod and the mount, it's brand new although it is a year old, the guy that owned it never used it, it was still in its case the first time it was powered up is when I got it uh, and tried it all out so I want to do a full unbiased review on it, like I say it's my mount, I've purchased it, I've not been asked to do this by anybody um, give you all the, all the, my opinions, good and bad, oh, they're not bad there's a couple of things that can be improved but on the whole it's very good so uh, what I'm going to do now is move the camera, get a bit closer and go around and point out all the individual features, things I really like about it, the things I think can be improved and uh, you can make up your own minds then. So, starting at the bottom, it's fitted onto the Ioptron 8 inch pier extension. I bought a pier adapter plate, I still needed the extra height so I got this pier extension with it. The guy sold me that, the mount and the tripod, uh, so I have used that. It's secured by two bolts in these slots here, there's one each side, and the bolts are quite deep down there, they're a little bit awkward, but you do get a supplied Allen key with it, which is a perfect fit, and the, boat, the bolts are also spring-loaded, so you have to push down on them to engage them uh, in, into the threaded slots of the uh, the top of the uh, extension tube and there's one of those on each side so there's just the two this is your uh, azimuth adjuster on this side so you've got a bolt there and a bolt on this side which you loosen and your adjuster is here which is quite smooth and easy to use and as soon as you've got it adjusted then you just tighten these two bolts these two bolts up now the azimuth adjuster again it's Pretty similar to most other mounts, you've got two knobs either side pushing on a central pin to move it. But the difference with this one is once you've got it into position, there's no lockdown bolts. The only obviously lockdown is the fact that those two bolts are tightened up against the central pin. There's no other locking mechanism. So whether you feel that could be knocked or moved by accident, I'm not so sure. I personally would have preferred some sort of locking mechanism on it but uh, we'll see how it goes with that. Down here you can see the panel, obviously a panel with ports that doesn't move, it's fixed, so you've got the DC power in, the on off switch, ST4, the USB to the PC and the hand control port. This DC cable uh, powers the mount itself, it also powers, you can get round this side, it powers the ports in here. There's two 3 volt, uh, sorry, 3 amp 12 volt ports. It auto powers those two. Um, the port, the power port on the other side, which is potentially a 5 amp port, is powered by a second power cable that goes into again an unmovable part of the mount on the back here, along with a USB plug that powers the three port USBs. On the back here. I'm not using any of those other than this 5 amp 12 volt port to power my Pegasus hub. I've got a power supply in there, a, sp a splitter from 12 volt, one into there, one into the mount and then one that goes up to here to power my Pegasus power hub. So it's quite a good, uh, quite a good system. The only single cable I've got hanging down is the USB cable that goes from there up to the PC uh, on the top here. Now if I was to move the PC off the mount I would still have one cable coming down because I would have a USB cable from my Pegasus hub down to the computer so there's no way of getting around having at least one cable um, hanging down which you know that's absolutely fine. So this is a, a CEM mount so it's cent centre balance and all the weight is over the centre and it does work very well because when I lifted it on here, uh, it was absolutely rock solid. You could feel all the weight was going down through this extension tube 
it didn't feel like it wanted to fall either way, which uh, I thought was very, very good. Um, you've got your clutch mechanisms, which again are pretty solid. You get a, 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 an audible clunk uh, when you engage and disengage. So you know it's engaged. It's not a clutch as such, although they're called clutches. You're actually disengaging and re-engaging the worm gear. Um, so I know they call them a clutch, but it's not strictly a clutch as it were. I've got extra counterweights on here. The counterweight shaft, you get a, a 9.5 kilogram counterweight with it. I've bought two extra five kilo ones because I like to have a lot more weight a lot closer to the mount. You see a lot of people that have just a single uh, 10 kilogram weight right down the bottom of the, can the counterweight shaft. And I don't like that. The, the closer you've got the weights to the mount, the more compact, the less pressure on the motors, uh, the smaller moment arm, it's got, you know, it's a lot better, less inertia needed to move it. So personally, I like to have a lot more weight and bring it right up close to the mount. This is actually a shorter counterweight shaft than what comes with it. I bought a shorter one because the longer one was right down here and it was just getting in the way in my small observatory and I didn't need that extra. So I bought this shorter one. It's actually an extension, but it's basically just a shorter tube. Screws on the bottom of the original, or you can put it in as a shorter tube, shorter extension tube, and that's what a, a extension, counterweight extension bar, which is what I've done. Uh, and so there's almost 20 kilograms of weights on there. Uh, and, and I just prefer it like that. This particular mount has got the eye polar built in electronic polar scope which is in there and again that's powered by the 12 volt power the extra 12 volt power port on the back here this one that powers the eye polar and again to use the eye polar i would need a usb cable in this port as well because that's the usb for it but i tend to use the three point polar alignment tool in nina so I'm not sure whether I'll use an eye polar, although I probably will try it. It's a lovely built mount. I will say that the finish isn't perfect. The casting, there's a few, uh, for want of a better expression, marks on the casting where it's a little bit poorer and not as smooth as the rest of it. But these are mass produced Chinese mounts, so I'm guessing that's to be expected. It's not an issue for me. It may be an issue for some, but... Uh, you know it is what it is um the saddle is a good solid saddle spring loaded clamps i do like the fact that these knobs have got allen key because they're not easy to grip they're metal but they you, you know your fingers can slip on them i do like the fact they've got these allen bolts so you can just nip them up with an allen key just to get that extra bit of torque on them uh, if required the big thing with these mounts that i've read about is the issue with balancing and a lot of people um, say you've got to have these 3D balance. Well, they're, they're absolutely, if I just undo this clutch, very, very smooth and very, very easy to move. They're extremely, the bearings obviously are so smooth. Very, very impressed with that. So you've, you've got to have that balance. Oh, it's got to be very well balanced because the slightest misbalance, it's going to move one way or the other. So when I balanced this, I found that I needed this extra weight on this side of the saddle. Now there is an M8 hole in this side, and there's also an M8 hole in this side, uh, which I think is for adding the 3D balance weight to the declination axis. I had to add this small uh, stack of washers here to this side, just so it would balance when it was vertical. Really due to the fact I've got a focus motor on this side, and I think it's just compensating for that. So with that, it's perfectly balanced. A lot of people with these mounts, you probably read, when they've got it completely balanced on a horizontal axis like that on the RA, when they put it back upright and they let go, it drifts like that, either one, either one way or the other. And that's why you see a lot of these mounts with an extra 3D balance bar sticking out from here with washers and such like on to try and balance it in 3D. This 
in my opinion, on this mount was not needed. Mine did drift one way, but there's two ways of actually adjusting this on the mount. And I wanna, I wanna talk in a bit of detail about this because if there was a, a negative point about this mount, then this is probably it. And the fact that a lot of people are having to have these extra 3D balance uh, gizmos on the side, um, well, I think, I think it's a bit of a, bit of a design flaw really. The counterweight shaft, because it's a Z, because it's like a, a Z shape, the counterweight shaft is obviously fitted in here rather than straight in to the RA access, so it's offset. And it's held in by this big bolt here that screws into the top of this stub and it's held in place. But on this side, you've got a single bolt and that single bolt, I don't know if you can see in there, just pushes against the shaft. So you tighten that one up and you tighten this side one up and that's it. Well, this bolt is always going to push the counterweight shaft that way. So it's pushing it very, very slightly off centre. And that's what's causing the drift of the mount, even when it's balanced in a, in a horizontal position. Because this counterweight shaft isn't perfectly in line with the RA axis. So what can you do about that? Well, what I've done about it, you can just see in here that I've got a tiny 0.4mm shim. So what I did was I loosened this bolt, loosened this bolt, Started with a 0.1mm shim, tested it to see whether it was drifting one way or and it carried on drifting. I ended up going up to a 0.4mm shim in there and now there's no drift. It stays bang in the middle and there's no need for these ugly 3D counterweight balance systems sticking out the side of the, of the shaft. Uh, and that's all it took. Simple. Now this counterweight shaft is in the middle of this casting. So even with that bolt tightened up, it can't push the shaft over. And I'm only talking, that's 0.4 millimeters. You don't need, 0.1 would be enough to throw it off. The other way of adjusting this, which a lot of people have done, is this bit that fits over a stub, if you like. It's a casting over the top of another casting. There's a bolt here, and a bolt there, and a big one on the top. What a lot of people have done is loosen these two side bolts and they found that this top hole has been elongated enough to shift this whole thing round a tiny bit and then tighten it back up because that's threaded on the inner on the inner cast and that's been enough for them to sort out the balance without needing a 3D system. On mine it didn't work because that hole there's no elongation at all it's an absolute dead fit so even loosening that there was no room to move it so that's why I had to come up with another solution of putting this shim in here and it's completely eliminated the problem now. The balancing, when everything is, is vertical, then the scope is vertical and the mount is with the weights pointing down, it doesn't drift one way or the other. So the only 3D balance I needed was this extra few washers here just to compensate for, well I think it's for this focus motor on this right side and it's all perfectly balanced. So. I think what Ioptron could do is this bolt here, they could have an opposite one on that side. And then you could loosen this top bolt, you could centralise the shaft with two bolts by pushing one in, one out, and get it perfectly central with those top, and then just nip that up. That's all it needs. So Ioptron, if there's anybody watching from Ioptron, please take note. This bolt here, just mirror it with another one on this side. So that people could actually centre the shaft and get it perfectly centred and in line with the axis. So it negates the need for having these ugly bars sticking out with washers and weights and everything else on them. It would be a simple fix in my honest opinion. As for using the mount, it's very, very smooth. Uh, I'm very, very pleased with the way these locking mechanisms work. Um, they're sort of spring loaded. There's no noticeable backlash at all. Uh, which is great because obviously with the EQ8 mount, my usual mount, there was a lot on the declination access on that. So uh, I, I did like the idea of moving to a mount with uh, potentially spring-loaded worms. This one's got GPS and I think that comes fitted as standard uh, on most of them. Um, once it's been used and it sets uh, the, the position up in the Ioptron Commander software, it's not really used again. The one thing I will say is setting it at my uh, latitude of 52 degrees, the cable in here that goes up to the GPS is very tight. 
it could do with being a little bit longer and it did actually pull the plug out of the GPS sensor in there, I had to plug it back in. If I was to move that any further down, it would be extremely tight and, it, and yeah, it's a bit of a, it could do with another centimetre length of cable on there. Um, other than that, other than the, the, the problem with the 3D balance that they could address, I haven't found any other problems, faults, whatever you want to call it with this mount. Uh, it holds, it's a SEM70, the 70 stands for 70 pounds, which is just over 31 kilograms of weight. Although they do say for imaging not to use any more uh, than about two thirds of that. I'm not sure why that is to be honest, but uh, that is what they say, but that's still more than enough for my needs. Um, it's very neat. It's, it's like I say, with having a smaller counterweight shaft, gives me a bit more room in the observatory to move around. Uh, but this is just a personal thing, having more weights pushed up, although I think it is better for the mount. Um, overall, I'm quite impressed with it. I haven't really used it in anger yet. I have used it briefly, and it, even on a, an average night of seeing, it was guiding around 0.5, and that's with just standard settings in PHD. I haven't tweaked any of that. I haven't run uh, the periodic error correction on the mount yet. Uh, I've still got a lot to do, but I just wanted to do an initial unbiased review on this mount. And overall, I'm extremely pleased with it. Uh, I would, up to now, I would certainly recommend it. Uh, originally, I was looking for a SEM60, but you can't find those anywhere second hand. They obviously were very good mounts because they don't come up second hand. It's normally a sure sign how good they are. Uh, I was lucky to get hold of this. Um, and... Well, when I've had a proper first light with it, I'll probably do another short, a short review just to let you know how I get on and uh, give you some proper results and maybe show some images, some guiding graphs uh, and everything else. But if you're looking for a mount uh, with, with this sort of payload, 31 kilogram payload, um, I think it's a, a real step up from the EQ6, which I owned a few years ago. Uh, I would say guiding and everything else, it actually seems better than the EQ8. Obviously, it hasn't got the payload of the EQ8, but uh, that doesn't really bother me at the moment with my setup. Uh, it's more than enough to cope. This is more than enough to cope with this. So yeah, impressions very good, very happy. So I hope you found that useful. Uh, it is just my opinion, obviously, of, of the mount. Uh, if you've got any questions, opinions, anything you want to know, please leave it in the comments. I hope anybody who's maybe interested in getting this mount or looking at an upgrade and considering it found this useful. And uh, if so, give it a thumbs up. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Clear skies.